Look at me making new friends. One of my favorite things about the KLR650 is how easy it is to find other KLR owners to ride with. Thomas showed up and after catching up with him over a nice cup of joe, he hit the road. This is Highway 14 on a Saturday and there is no shortage of trucks to get stuck behind. It's not worth passing these trucks. It's a very dangerous stretch of highway. And if you're just patient enough and you stick with it, eventually we'll break free in the gorge where there's no trucks at all. We usually cross over at Bridge of the Gods or in Hood River. And as you're gonna see, there is no shortage of epic scenery in the Columbia River Gorge. Although one of the best scenes in the gorge, Cape Horn is a very dangerous place to stop, and sometimes you can't because the traffic pulled off there. There is also no shortage of trains in the Columbia River Gorge. And if that's your thing, eh, it's a little weird, but I won't judge you. I guess they're kind of cool. This is probably my favorite stretch on Highway 14. I really love going through these tunnels and hearing the exhaust. Thomas has a muzzy and it sounds absolutely amazing. I've never heard a KLR sound that good. I absolutely love my GoPro Hero 8 Black. Unfortunately, the wind wash is absolutely terrible on these things when you're riding motorcycles. That's why the volume is turned down and I have music in the background. You don't have to travel a long distance before you start getting into scenery like this in the Columbia River Gorge. One of the things I love about Oregon is it has the coast, the mountains, the forest, and the high desert. You can go from the doom and gloom of Portland to a sunny stretch of Highway 14 for about $2 worth of gas in your KLR.
It's amazing how many people don't know about Stonehenge Memorial. If you ever get the chance and you're looking for something to do, I highly recommend taking the time and coming out here and checking this out. Stonehenge is a war memorial, and we should forever remember the names and sacrifices of our fallen heroes. Well, that's worth a 90 mile ride, huh? That's an incredible view. <clears throat> All right, so here we got Dylan with his 2023 adventure model. Tell me a little bit about your bike. Um, had it for probably like six months now. I've done some pretty sketchy stuff with it. <laughs> so um, you've had it off road? Yeah. Where do you go riding? Uh, usually Jones Creek. Yeah, that's hardcore. In, uh, Vancouver. Jones Creek ain't no joke. Yeah, I just got the uh, skid plate on there, the low profile train plug, some park busters and some new mirrors. Awesome. So that's your customizations you've done so far? Yeah, I've uh, put these boxes on as well. Let's check those out. Recently, just some Apaches. You like those? Yeah, they're pretty good. They seem to do what I need them to do, mm -hmm. you know? And you say they've held up better than the uh, stock ones? Yeah, I haven't had them on too long, but stock ones were not too good right how many miles do you got on the bike so far uh 2500 nice 2500 awesome miles huh yeah smiles hell yeah smiles. well sir that is a good looking bike Thank you. yeah and it's been a really fun ride up to stonehenge today yeah. yes, sir. the weather is exceptional and uh yeah well thank you yes, sir. all right and Brandon, this is my 2009 KLR 650. Bought it three years ago after COVID hit. It came pretty customized. Uh, it's a little thrashed, which I like because it's my first adventure bike and I've dropped it more than hippies drop acid at a Grateful Dead concert. Um, but it's been a really good bike. Uh, I haven't really done too many things to it. I actually decustomized it, took a lot of things off of it, stripped it down a little bit, and uh, it's very trail friendly. A buddy of mine tipped me with the uh, GP or IRC GP 110s, these tires, and I highly recommend those to anybody looking for a good tire. I think they're 70-30s, but they're very sporty on the road, and as far as gravel roads, they do awesome. So pretty stoked on those. That was a good tip for doing a buddy's floors. Uh, thank you, John Olver, by the way, another motorcycle enthusiast. And other than that, yeah, solid KLR. Right on, Love man. It. And here we are with three awesome KLRs. We got a 2015, a 2009, and a 2023. Couldn't think of a better bike to ride in a group. So Thomas, I'm excited about this. I love your bike. Tell me a little bit about it. Well, it's a 2015 KLR 650. Um, I think it's easier to list the things that aren't modified on it. <laughs> um, obviously front and rear crash bars the master cylinder cover here the larger uh, uh brake pedal there it helps a lot when you're standing 
It's got yeah. the big brake kit in the front, so it's got a much larger caliper or rotor on there. Um, up top, I've got a um, an auxiliary dash here so I can charge stuff. So I have two two cables that go back to the back of the bike. Sweet. And they actually run into my bag. So I can charge a, a brick while I'm going. I can still charge my phone here. Um, or what else? Um, Tell me about that exhaust, man. That's my favorite part of your bike. I can't shut up about it. It's a muzzy exhaust. I'm not exactly sure on the model itself. It was there when I got the bike. Um, but I think it's the best sounding KLR. Well, I have to agree with that. And I'm not just saying that because this is the only KLR I've ever ridden, ridden with or next to that doesn't sound like a KLR. Oh, I gotta put this thing in neutral. sound like a klr i have a lex on mine and it sounds like a damn lawnmower going down the highway he's got a stock one on there his sounds good too but if i could get my hands on a muzzy i would not to copy you but i don't think i could help it if i could find one of those i'd put it on my bike in a heartbeat good looking bike though man and uh, what kind of riding do you do you get pretty hardcore too don't you yeah uh, i do a lot of off-road the majority of what i do is off-road so i did the washington bdr earlier this summer um rode up to canada probably did about 700 miles 800 miles off-road there that's awesome um, done part of the oregon bdr as well um, i'd like to finish that up i don't know hopefully before the season ends if not next year i'll hit it right well i've ridden with you too and i've seen you go places where i couldn't get to on mine so i can attest to that yeah i'll take it uh, it's been to more places than it probably should i'll jump things <laughs> pretty frequently i've seen you do that um i think the biggest thing is just having the confidence to do it well i enjoy riding with you you're one of those klr riders that i could probably grow with in my skills riding next to because uh i've seen you do things most people only do on their dirt bikes on Not a klr and I modified something for you guys. You know, if you guys ever get these Tusk Pilot bags, mm -hmm. normally they have straps going over the top, but I have mine truly set up as quick release. <laughs> oh, um, that was cool. I was supposed to go to Mexico this year. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> I really wanted to be able to pull everything off immediately and, and be able to carry everything with uh -huh. me instead of having to, you know, strap everything up every time. That's uh, been a good addition. Yeah, it looks like it. That is very cool. Well, Thomas, thanks for the interview. Yeah. And Dylan. And myself, thank you, Dylan, for interviewing me or letting me ramble on about my KLR. But you got three KLRs here. They're as different as night and day, but we're all KLR family, and we're always looking for more people to ride with. See you on the trails.